What's going on everybody? Here I am today with my beautiful 2018 Shelby GT350. Today I'm going to be telling you guys why I love this car so much and why I think it's the best car you can get for the money. Let's get into it. The first thing I really love about this car is its Voodoo engine. Let's take a look at it. This right here is all the magic stashed away in the Shelby GT350. It's equipped with a 5.2 liter naturally aspirated V8 that is a flat plane crank engine that revs all the way up to 8,250 RPMs. This engine pushes 526 horsepower and 429 pound-feet of torque. This car sounds absolutely amazing. In fact, I think it's the best sounding car that you could buy under $100,000. If you guys think anything else sounds better, please mention it down in the comment section because I doubt anything really does. I could talk all day about how amazing this car sounds, but let me start it up and give it a few revs. Guys, I'm really glad nobody was around while I was revving this car. It is so loud and some people, you know, become Karens and get kind of triggered at it. But it sounds absolutely phenomenal. And I hope it really picked it up well through the camera. So this car reaches up to 95 decibels. The GT350R goes above because it comes from factory with an X pipe. This car isn't always too loud because this exhaust system is an active exhaust system, which means by the flip of a switch in the interior of the car, you can make it go from loud to quiet. It's in normal mode right now at the moment. So you see that's normal mode, which is quiet. Let's give it a few revs. All right, that's up to 3000 RPMs. Now let's open these valves and rev it up to 3000 RPMs. This thing absolutely rumbles. It is so crazy. I love this car. All right, the next thing that I really love about this car is its transmission. This car is equipped with a six speed manual gearbox. One thing I really love about this transmission is how notchy it is. As you can see right here, this is the first gear and it's super notchy. You really gotta feel it for yourself, but you might be able to tell through camera. It feels super precise and is very easy to use. The next thing I really love about this car is actually an option that you can equip it with, which is the Recaro seats. These seats you seriously cannot go wrong with. These are so awesome. I've driven the car for multiple hours, probably about up to six hours in a day, and you get no pain with these seats. They are so comfortable and they are so aggressively bolstered as you can see right here and down here. Another good thing about these seats is they're super easy to keep clean. Um, what I like about them is they actually do not have any leather on them. They're fully cloth and suede. Um, and that's a good thing because sometimes you see with leather bolsters like this, they will get worn out and they'll get wrinkled very easily. And those wrinkles and creases kind of make the car look very aged. However, this car, these seats always are looking really fresh and they're really hard to mess up. The other seats you can get in the GT350 have a cooling and heating function. That's the only thing that these seats are missing out on, but in my opinion, it's totally worth it to just cancel out those two options to have these, just because of how fantastic they feel to drive in and because of how fantastic they look. They look so great, I cannot get over The next thing I love about this car is its tires. You cannot find a car in this price range that comes with 295s in the front and 305s in the back stock from factory. It is absolutely absurd how large these wheels are. And it looks super aggressive and fat from the back end. It looks awesome. Check out the girth of those tires. 
The 2015s to 2018 GT350s come with Pilot Super Sports on the car from factory. And the 2019 and up models come with the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires. I personally am very glad that these came with the Super Sport tires on them because I do daily drive this car and it's likely that one day I'm going to end up in the rain with these tires. However, with the Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2s, those are more grippier in dry conditions. However, once you face rain, it gets a little bit sketchy because you'll be hydroplaning, which is very dangerous to be doing in a vehicle. And you guys may be wondering, yes, I did just say that. I daily drive my Shelby GT350, which leads me on to my next point, which is how amazing its drivability is. Let's get into it. Here we are on the interior of the car. This car is equipped with Apple CarPlay, which is super amazing when you're on a commute or driving anywhere, because you can have your navigation and all your music up all through this super smart interface. And this interface I have zero complaints about. I think it's absolutely flawless and Ford couldn't have done a better job with it. All right, so the first driving mode in this car is normal. Normal driving mode has your valves automatically closed and it has your damper set to normal with your steering set to normal. There's also a comfort mode for your steering if you want it to be more smooth and a lot more lighter. The next mode up is your sport mode. Sport mode puts you in the sport ESC and it puts your dampers in sport so your ride quality will be a little bit harder. This also puts your steering feel in sport mode which tightens it up a lot and it feels very nice but I personally prefer to have it in the normal steering mode. Next up you got the weather mode. Weather mode I guess is good for the rain if you take it in the rain. Um, when I drive in the rain I keep it in sport mode. Why? Because I'm a savage. <laughs> I think it provides more of a fun experience in the rain if you know how to handle it. Obviously on a first rain when it's slippery out I'll probably have it in normal or weather mode um, just to be safe. But yeah that's um, weather mode. You have it in the regular dampers. You can't toggle it to sport and you have it in the regular normal steering mode but you can toggle it between the three. Next mode up is your track mode. Track mode as you see that traction light automatically turned on. This halfway turns off your traction control to a super aggressive driving style while you're on the track which will allow quite a bit more slippage over sport mode. Track mode I have yet to use. Why? Because I'm a little bit too scared. Go ahead and make fun of me in the comments. I did just say that I'm a little bit too scared to use it. I haven't experimented it with, with it yet. Maybe I'll take it in a parking lot one day and experiment with it and get more comfortable. So then your damper mode goes into track mode and this is the only way to unlock your track dampers which are significantly harsher than your sport dampers. And your steering mode as you see right here goes into sport mode. Next is your drag strip mode. Drag strip, strip mode is amazing. As you can see down there in the corner the LC logo popped up which is actually your launch control right here that you can toggle in any mode that you're in. And this basically you can set your car to limit from 4000 to 6000 RPMs you can launch it from. And drag strip mode is super, super smart. I love it. It is in normal steering mode to begin with. And your dampers are in drag strip dampers, which means your back wheels will be as soft as they can and the front wheels will be as stiff as they can, providing the best launch and the best hook you possibly can get. Those are all your drag modes, but as you can see, this car can really take you through every single situation you need to. Next thing with the drivability is its visibility is so amazing. I've driven a Camaro ZL1 before and I personally hated it. Everyone has their personal opinions, but the Camaro, I feel like the dash is all the way up here. And then looking at the side windows, it's impossible. In this car, you cannot see through here, but you can see perfectly through here for your blind spot. In the Camaro, it's way harder. You kind of have to move your head towards the window and then look out. Next thing is the visibility through your back mirror. I'm not sure if you guys can see that perfectly, but it's a perfect view all the way out through the back. I know for the R, if you have the R wing, it's a little bit harder, but in this car, you can see perfectly through that back window. And then looking over, glancing over here, you can see perfectly through this window and from my angle you can see through that back window right there which I had so much trouble looking through in the Camaro and you can see perfectly through this rear window looking for any oncoming traffic. 
All right, the last thing I really love about this car is all of its gauges. Over here, we got our oil pressure gauge and our oil temperature gauge, which is always sitting here. I love how they incorporate it to sit here all the time so you can know when your car is completely warmed up or not. Next thing I really like is its features, along with these gauges, all of its features. You can see your status of your car over here. Then you have line lock. If you hold down your brake, you have line lock, which locks your front brakes and it allows your rear tires to burn up and create a big smoke cloud which looks super epic or do a burnout right before you drag race. Then you have your launch control right here. You can turn it on and off and then you can go to your RPMs menu and you can adjust it from anywhere from 4,000 up to 6,000 RPMs of your choice. Next up you got your exhaust mode, normal and sport like I showed you guys earlier. Next thing you got is your shifting lights this right here is your tack mode it goes from left to right this right here is your track mode it meets in the middle which is my personal favorite then this right here is your drag mode where it just flashes at you when you need to shift so you can customize that all right here in the options in this menu right over here i personally always keep it on track and i have my shift point which is adjustable set to 7800 rpms when it completely closes in and flashes at me you can also change your shift light and intensity, which I have set to 100%. You can dim it and you can brighten it all the way up to your desiring. Next feature I really like is it shows how many G's you pull in this car while you're in track mode. If you go out for a track day, it'll show you the max braking G's, lateral G's, and acceleration G's that you have pulled. Next is your acceleration timer. You can do 0 to 30, 0 to 60, 0 to 100, 1 eighth mile and 1 quarter and a quarter mile and it will time exactly how long it took for you to get there through this car's system. All right, so then you got your lap timers over here which I believe you hit okay while you pass the start and stop of the lap and it will track them for you and you have multiple different tracks here to set them on. Next you have your brake performance so you can go from a 60 to zero and a 100 to zero and it'll time it for you. And then over here you have all your results stored over here so you can take a look at them. All the options here in this car and all the things it measures and shows you is super amazing. Oh, and I almost forgot about this other part. This car also shows you all of these things such as your air fuel ratio, axle oil temperature, cylinder head temp, inlet air temp, engine oil temp, trans oil temp, and your voltage. And then it shows how many miles you have until empty, which every car does. And then it has your mile per hour gauge right over here. However, I keep it on this screen just so I can check that all my temperatures are good, especially on the hot days we get out here in California. All right, I'm gonna cut to some flybys now of this car so you can hear the exhaust and how amazing it is. I also, on my channel, have a point of view driving video with the external mic that I think you guys will love. Please drop a like down below if you enjoyed today's video. Also, if you have any tips of how I can make them better, please leave it down in the comment section or drop a comment if you have any 
content that you guys would like to see on this channel. Also stay tuned because I got reviews coming on many different cars such as a 2021 Huracan Evo and also a Porsche 911 Carrera S 2021 with the Tech Heart body kit. I'm also maybe potentially doing a few races down in Mexico with this beast or the Cadillac CTS-V. So please let me know what you guys would like to see with those two cars and stay tuned and I look forward to seeing every single one of you guys next video.